I just wish I had known some some things back in the day, which which um, I only learned a, a decade later. I learned some stuff, right? Um, and but maybe in the end, it's even better for for everyone because Claire became highly successful in FPGA, and mm -hmm. um, she did she and her team and and friends and and everyone in the open source sphere did amazing work with uh, reverse engineering all the FPGA stuff um, and and writing the whole open source Yosis FPGA uh, toolchain. Um, or maybe soon more than FPG, probably ASIC, maybe also like all the open source, uh, yeah, silicon, silicon toolchain and stuff. And um, probably it was meant to be, but in, in retrospect, of course, it could be different. I wish it would be different, but it is what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, I also, also only wish, like, for example, like that domains would not have been let slap and like now probably some domain grabbers have the domain, which would have been cool if if they said like hey we have done this now like hey do you want to have the domain mm -hmm. um i always like this when you open some historic stuff and you you get to the right things and not some advertising site yeah um, yeah which is which is similar i still need to try to contact the t2 linux people because the open source people who did the apple t2 I was going to bring that support. up because now if you search oh, for T2 did... Linux, you don't find T2 SDE. It's only yeah. the the uh, T2 stuff for <laughs> that. Yeah, that's a little bit unfortunate. I, I mean, I see why. I mean, they came much later, right? Probably like a decade later mm -hmm. or so. I mean, it's the, the fun thing is like every, every big company used the T2 name, which even Apple T2 and there was even Sun Microsystems. Mm -hmm. Niagara Falls T2. There were even uh, digital digital video broadcasting chips. Um, that's a little bit unfortunate. I only hope, like, I see already in the future one day the T2 Linux people will stop their Intel work and um, maybe they could pass the domain on. And that's always would, would have been nice if, if we don't rename this. Maybe it's maybe we should rename it someday to something more. <laughs> Flashy thing. Well, you did say it was a like placeholder, it. but I think that yeah, it was a pl <laughs> it was uh, a placeholder twenty five years ago. <laughs> yeah, given I mean, then then first some, some microsystems did a CPU. Then Apple Apple did some uh, a SOC, some system on sure, mm. and and uh, who knows what? Like it's yeah, may, maybe maybe eventually. The problem is uh, if you rename it's, it, it's, like you have to then think yeah, of a name. Yeah, and and like all the decades of marketing, and then it's right, even right, more confusing. Right. Like T Z thing, formerly known as T two and stuff. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. I I also thought in the end it's not important. Like name name is name. It's like yeah, so what? It's people who want to find it find it, and I don't know, but maybe that's always always so much things to think about, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. including the name. <laughs> so when the project continued off of Rock Linux. Was it initially just basically a continuation of the project, or has the goals of T two SDE evolved from what Rock Linux was trying to do? Um, so initially, we tried, we forked it with, with the initial goal to make it more professional for more embedded development. Because what pe most people also don't know, so it's basically because people often don't quite understand, and so what it's basically it's like build root on steroids or like more Linux from scratch, more automated mm -hmm. um, or like Gen 2, but for more cross compilation. So that is what in when we forked this in 2003 or so, um, we it, the focus was more professional about the development, like for mm -hmm. like your next ARM board, right? Like ARM or whatnot board here, right? Mm -hmm. my, my, my desk is full of embedded stuff. Um, like, Cross compiling, like basically, as that's also why mo how most people with T two made a living. They did embedded projects like satellite receivers. We we did carrier grade uh, base band stations there. Um, I think I heard that even some hotel chain used it in IPTV in Austria, um, but that's not me. It's I only heard this. Mm -hmm. A Swiss company used it for archiving. Um, even a company used it for. Some telephone. That's also not something I've done. Uh, only other developers. They, because T two supported Blackfin DSPs. Like basically, we support everything. So because we were the only ones supporting um, analog, uh, analog devices, ADI, right? Analog devices, Blackfin DSPs. It was used for this um, telephone. Some telephone 
uh, voice over IP, PBXs. Um, I don't even like, I can't even know where, where it's used, right? Like it, mm -hmm. it's like build root and people use it for embedded projects, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that's what, what it's mostly meant to, what the main, um, the main target of T2, but we continued, always continued to support server uh, virtualization and desktop. So we all, like all major core developers always have run it um, on the desk. And, and I'm live streaming from T2, right? Mm -hmm. Like um, today, so that's fully featured desktop tool. And, and the embedded distributions that you can also run on your server and desktop. 